This is the 2025 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. Is this the most versatile trim level? Hey everybody, this is Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today, Carrie and I are at Holmes Honda in Shreveport, Louisiana to give you the important information to help answer that question down in the comments later in the video to give you all the details and show you what this model has that other trim levels of the Pilot don't have. If you want to know more about this model, check out the link in the description of the video. Whether it's this model or anything else they have at Holmes Honda, check it out. If you come in and buy something, tell whoever you work with that Tom from Vehicle Visionary sent you. Let's talk about what this model has that number one sets it apart and what it may have that you'll find on other trim levels. It has most of the high-end features that you'll get on the Elite trim level, but here we're going to have the badging that's going to be on the front and the rear, the Trail Sport badging. We're also going to have the skid plates underneath the vehicle. And as far as conventional things go, we have LED daytime running lights. So you're going to have that there, your nice bright headlights. And on the lower portion of the bumper, make sure we show you that, there are LED fog lights. I like the look here with the front grille. Everything just seems to be proportioned perfectly. The size, the height, the width, the gloss black works, and the size of that Honda logo. And here's something that's going to separate this model apart from almost all other trim levels except for the Elite, the front camera. And right here, if you're wondering what this is, that's the front camera washer. Every time you activate the windshield washer fluid to spray clean the windshield, Windshield washer fluid will also spray across the front camera. You don't have to do anything special to make that happen, but you can see it in action on the screen. Now, these models do come standard as far as the Trail Sport trim level goes, all-wheel drive. You will find specifically tuned for this trim level suspension. You will also find all-terrain tires. Let's talk about our tire and wheel size. The width will be 265. We're going to have a 60 series sidewall wrapped around the 18 inch wheels and there is a spare tire located underneath the vehicle. That brings peace of mind. Here is your remote as far as what you have. Small, compact, but very sturdy and it does have the coveted remote start feature. And there is so much to talk about with these side view mirrors. I could almost do a full video just on that. So you have the gloss black mirror caps. You have the turn signal indicators built in. There's also cameras underneath one on each mirror. They're power adjustable. They're heated. You have the blind spot information system. I told you there was a lot here, but there's one more feature. I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm just going to show it to you. They're also power folding. So that's a good thing to know about. A lot of you like that feature. You also have with that remote, you have a proximity key. You have the walk away feature. You also have your gloss black door handles. That really sets things apart, especially with this diffused sky pearl exterior color. You will also find your roof rails up here. You can obviously buy the crossbars to add cargo up there and just make things a lot easier to deal with, give you some more space to work with. In addition to what's on the interior, and there is a panoramic sunroof, as you can see right there. And we'll work our way here to the rear. We'll have our nice bright LED tail lights back here. That's always a benefit. Here is our second Trail Sport logo. I mentioned that earlier that that was there. Now you get to see that it's there. And one thing that would be interesting to see is maybe have a brighter color for the name Pilot right here, just because against that gloss black finish, it blends in a little too much in my personal opinion. I don't know, most people are probably not too worried about that. We do have the exposed window wiper, rear window wiper here as well. Some people want to see that tucked away in here. I've actually had people say they'd rather see that than have it exposed. I do like having it tucked away, not a huge deal either way. It does clean things up back here. And you can see that you are ready to put your hitch in there, your trailer hitch. This model, being all-wheel drive, will tow up to 30, excuse me, 5,000 pounds. If you have front-wheel drive, which this model does not come with, but obviously a lot of other trim levels do, that number drops to 3,500. If you're that person that says, Tom, I'm ready to step out of my current SUV because I can't stand the turbocharged engine, good news. No turbocharger here. A naturally aspirated dual overhead cam V6. 3.5 liters, it puts out 285 horsepower and 262 on the torque. It's mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. 
Now we'll work our way over here to the window sticker so that we can tell you about the MPGs and what those are. So we're looking at 18 miles per gallon city, 23 highway, 20 combined. And let's see, I can't quite see the down here, five gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. And you will find capitalist fuel fill here, but if you're wondering about the gas tank size, 18 and a half gallons, tell me what you think, is that enough? And as far as gaining access to the rear cargo area, you do have a hands-free tailgate right here. Now this is not going to have the motion sensor under the rear, but you do have a couple of different ways you can open this. Now you might say, hey Tom, that opens in a very shallow manner. It's too low for me. Well, that's easy to fix. Notice right here, I don't know how well you can see it, but it says hold to set height. So all you're gonna do is hold that button down. Now we're gonna change the height real fast here to max height. Listen for the beeps. And be patient with me, we'll watch this in real time. So we're gonna close the door back down and when I open it back up here in just a few seconds, you're going to see that it goes ahead and opens up all the way to that height where I just set it. Super simple to deal with, something we just like to share sometimes in our videos. Now, depending on how you configure things, we're looking at 18.6 to 86 and a half to 87 cubic feet of cargo space. Now, if you want to lower the rear seats, all you have to do is pull on the release right here. Make sure as you do that, that you put the release right there, or at least get it on there at some point, because if you don't, and it winds up flopping all the way forward, well, let me go over to this side and I'll show you why that could be a bit of a challenge. See how far forward that is? Now, I can reach that, barely, but if it was right here, that would take care of things. And you can see how everything looks maximized back here as far as your cargo capacity goes. A lot of different options, a lot of different potentials where the interior is concerned with this model. You also have your panoramic sunroof up there. That's gonna bring two thumbs up from a lot of people because I know a lot of people tell me, I don't like conventional size sunroofs, Tom. Give me a panoramic sunroof. Hey, that's perfectly okay. Now, I'm going to take that and move it out of the way. Now, the cool thing about the cover right here for the floor is that it is dual sided. So you've got the carpeted side, you also had the plastic side. So just to show you how this works, you can take this and put it right back in here. And there you go. The advantage to that is if you have something that could get the carpet dirty or stain it, well, you can flip that back over like this to the plastic side, problem solved. You do have space underneath the floor right here as far as cargo capacity goes, just some additional space. And over here on the other side, I'm gonna let Carrie come around to this side and we'll show you some of the things that are here. If I can get this to come up here, let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna let Carrie show you what's in there as far as a few different additions, tools for changing the tire. And that funnel right there, I'm gonna tell you something about the funnel. Let's take that and we'll go ahead and put that into its position in the gas tank just to show you how that works. I'm gonna let Kerry handle that real quick. Let me open the gas door since he doesn't have a free hand. Now, a lot of people don't like capitalist fuel fill because I know you're nervous about somebody coming along, maybe stealing gas from you, maybe putting some foreign substance in your gas tank. So there's a couple of things for this. This shows why capitalist fuel fill isn't as bad as a lot of people think it is. If you ever run out of gas, you need this because there are baffles, actually two, that have to be opened in the gas tank to allow the gas to begin to flow. And I actually had somebody that told me in the comment section, that's not what that's for. It was a correction, Nazi. Yeah, I like to make Carrie laugh behind the camera. But the thing is, try putting gas in your gas tank with a conventional gas can without using that, and you'll find out that that is indeed exactly what it's for. And let's talk about what your second and third row passengers are going to find. We'll start with the door panel and I'll let, you, let Kerry show you what's going on over on his side. You have the upper and the lower door bins with cup holders built into that upper door bin. Quite a bit of space there. I like the fact that there are a lot of spaces throughout the interior here for smaller items. And how about the comfort of the armrest? We're gonna get the thumbs up or thumbs down or maybe the neutral thumb. Thumbs up, Carrie says it is comfortable. And you'll notice something here. I know a lot of people don't like black interiors, but I do think that it's nice that here on the Trail Sport trim level, you have that orange contrast stitching that breaks things up. So 
that's always a good thing. And as we work our way into the interior here, in fact, one more thing on that door, we also have the privacy shade. It can be put in place right here, as you can see right there. kerry has got one over there on his side as well. And so you do have the privacy glass back here, but if that's not enough, well, those are there to help as well. Now, let's talk about the middle row seats because there are some nice things to know about here. Number one, you can move them back and forth. There is a release on the front to adjust the position of the seats themselves. They have recline built into them. We have this seat reclined back here on the left-hand side over there on Carrie's side, and you use that lever right there to do that. We also have the rear seats, one side reclined, as you can see on the right-hand side, at least on driver's right, on your left, on the screen, but you can see what's there. Now, to gain access to the third row, one reason I'm on this side is sometimes people tell me that only, the only time you ever see anybody get in is off the left-hand side, on the driver's side over there. That's not the only way you can do that. So there's a button on the side of the seat that we can push to move the seat out of the way. Pretty easy to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to push that button right there. The seat gets up and out of the way. Makes it possible for me to hop into the rear seating area. And keep in mind, you can see the leg space that I have right here. I actually have quite a bit. And without having the middle seat here that is available, if you want to have that, well, having that out actually makes it a little bit easier. I can stretch at least one leg out, so that kind of helps. But there is a lot of space here. And as far as functionality goes, there will be an air conditioning vent here. There is a USB option right here and a couple of cup holders as well. So it's nice to have that there if somebody wants to take advantage of those things back here. And obviously you can see that I'm reclined way back. It's very comfortable back here. That gives me even more head space than I would have otherwise. And that button that we saw on the side of the seat is also right there on the back of the seat as well. So that means that if the middle row passengers hop out and forget about the rear passengers, well, all you have to do is push that button. The seat gets right up and out of the way. And how about the middle row? Well, talk about the armrests here first. You know the armrests built into these seats. You will really only have one position for those, but it seems to be pretty comfortable. I think that will work. You're probably not going to be sitting here anyway. You're probably going to be sitting in the driver's seat. On the rear of the seats, you have the seat pockets that are nice, large, and deep, but you also have the pocket right there that you could stick a cell phone in if you wanted to. We also have our climate control back here. We have our rear air conditioning vents on the rear of the center console, all of the different functionality right here. And then we have the power outlet right there. We also have USB options. So a really nice setup back here. Three zones of climate control, that's a good thing. And the good thing is that the third zone can be controlled independent of the front two zones. All right, it's that time of the video. For those of you who are saying, all right, Tom, I really like what I see here. By the way, one thing I haven't mentioned earlier is you do have 8.1 inches of ground clearance. So about an inch higher than any other trim level of the Pilot. How much will it cost you to get into this model at Holmes Honda? $50,950. Let's see what else you get for the price. As far as the door panel goes over there on the passenger side door, you're going to find the same basic setup as we saw in the rear. That nice comfortable armrest. We're also going to have the upper and the lower door bins with the cup holders built in and a little bit of gloss black trim. We also saw that on the rear doors as well, but didn't talk about it, but it is there. Now, I like the fact that you have the gloss black trim, but you have the silver finish on the door handle because obviously that would fingerprint up like crazy. It wouldn't be gloss black for long. It would eventually be fingerprint. And power seats for the passenger and the driver. They are both heated, not ventilated in this particular case, but you can do that if you want to. Now, we will find one thing here in the front seat we didn't find in the rear, the Trail Sport logo embroidered in the headrest. In my opinion, that should be in all of the headrests. Tell me what you think about that. I know a lot of people aren't too worried about that kind of thing, but you never know what everybody's thoughts are. We'll have Carrie hop on into the interior. By the way, there is a Trail Sport logo down there on the floor mat as well that Carrie can show you real quick. I'm gonna let him pan down there and show that interesting to see where those things show up. So let's go ahead and look at the glove box area. 
I like the fact that you have space there. You also have the wheel lock key within the bag right there, so they call it more of a wheel lock box than a glove box. We also have the upper area. I wouldn't really call that an upper glove box, but there is storage up there, so it's nice to see Honda using that. I'm really surprised that more automakers don't do that. Now, we do have the 9-inch touchscreen right here. Some people say it's too small. I always want to know what do you think the minimum size is you should have. But one way or another, it's an easy to use system. You have this little area right here to kind of rest your fingers so that when you're navigating your way through, whether you use that arrow or you just swipe across, you also have cabin talk right there. You can go to display mode and change what you do here as far as brightness and everything goes. If you wanted to turn that all the way down or turn it all the way back up, there's how you do that. Vehicle settings. Pretty easy to figure out what's going on here because of the graphics, although I do find it interesting that that is not the door or the front end of a Pilot. That looks more like an Accord. Apparently, they're just using that across the board on everything. Now, that looks like a Pilot right there or maybe a Passport. I can't really tell for sure from this angle, but that's interesting. Either way, it's easy to deal with and easy to learn. Now, we'll also have wireless capabilities for your cell phone, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. We're going to have down here our dual zone climate control. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, you can sync these two together if you want to for your two zones in the front, or they can be individually tuned, I guess you could say, as far as the numbers go. We also have three settings here on each seat for ventilate or excuse me, for heat. You can control the rear settings from here if you want to. I was also talking about that earlier. And we'll look down here at our connectivity options, a 12-volt power outlet, USB, A and C, and then we'll also have a little bit of space here. A phone could fit in there, but it sticks out so far. I just don't know that that's the best place for a phone. But there is room right here for a phone, or maybe a little hint, hint for Honda, a second wireless phone charger, just like we have here. Why not have two instead of just one? And we have our cup holders right here. The push button shifter, some like it, some don't. Tell me what your thoughts are with that. You also have multiple driving modes. I'm going to let Carrie go through all of that later on. You also have hill descent control and hill start assist. You can turn off the auto stop start feature, power parking brake, and your brake hold mode. And I do like the nice wide center console right here. So plenty of space where that's concerned, not only for an armrest for the front driver and the passenger here in the front, but also for space within. There is a lot. And one thing I want to show real quick, right here, this button, I'm going to let Carrie go back to the screen, the center screen right now, and I'm going to push that button and show you what happens. The cameras come up. Now that's the trail cam. So what that is, is that's going to show you what's right in front of you. If you're out on a trail or whatever the case is, that helps out. We also have multiple camera views here besides the trail cam. We also have those side view or side view mirror, mirror uh, cameras, if I can get untongue twisted on that. We also have our overhead 360 degree view. Now let's go back here. Watch that. There is the front camera washer. So as I told you, all you have to do is run the windshield washer fluid and you clean off the front camera. And Last but not least, before we move on to Carrie's driving lounge in the video, we're going to go up here to the center console, excuse me, the upper console. Let's get that right. So you'll have the control right here for the shade. That way you can draw the shade forward. We'll go ahead and do that real quick just to show you that in action. If it's getting too warm in the interior or whatever the case is and you want to conceal away the panoramic sunroof, well, you can do that right there. And the button over here on the left-hand side is going to be for opening and closing the sunroof. It is tilt and, or excuse me, it will tilt and slide open. I almost said tilt and telescopic. It's not a steering wheel adjustment. We know that. And you also have the conversation mirror right here. So when the kids or the adults are being unruly in the back seat, you can give them the evil eye. Or if they're being good, you can give them the kind eye. Or you can pull out your sunglasses out of there and put them on. If your sunglasses are dark enough, they won't be able to see your eyes, period. Hey, Vehicle Visionary and YouTube watchers. Carrie here for Carrie's Driving Lounge Honda Trail Sport Edition today. Let's get into this. So on the driver's side door here, we have mirror controls. 
left and right and your adjustment, your door unlock button, your window unlock and lock button, and your mirror controls right there. Your door handle to get in and out, your two seat memory, which on the passenger side we don't have memory seats, but on the driver's side we do. We have a button here to uh, raise the hatch in the back, the windshield, uh, the windshield heater in the front, the stability control, dead button there, vent control, cup holders, which we already went over. Open this door up. There is the hood latch down here to open the hood. There's a dead pedal there for your left foot and gas and brake pedals, rubber, nothing special down there. We have the adjustment here for tilt telescope steering wheel, the lever here for that. We all know how to work that. We also have the stock here for turn signal for those people who like to use turn signals. Let's see how those work. Yeah, there's left and there's right. They do work, at least in this vehicle here. You have your headlight controls, your fog light controls, off and on switch there. On the right side, we have your washer controls for your uh, windshield washers, front and back, your mist. Tom already showed you how to work the camera right here and how to spray the windshield and the front camera. Steering wheel, nice and thick. Feels really good in the hand. Nice, soft leather feel. I'm sure that's probably not real leather, but it feels like real leather. Anyway, feels very good in the hand. There's a heated steering wheel uh, button right here. Airbag uh, area is some kind of a vinyl material. Looks like uh, like leather, but it's not leather, but it does feel good in the hand um, as far as the steering wheel is concer concerned. Three-spoke steering wheel. I like three-spoke steering wheels. On the first uh, spoke here on the left side, we have the volume controls for the radio, the button for forward and backward on your radio stations. You have a button here to talk to the vehicle, to ask it questions or bring the radio on or whatever it, this button here does. There's a wheel here that you can flip through and on the screen you see it goes through different options, safety, support, tire pressure, maintenance, seat belts, all wheel drive, torque distribution, driver attention, navigation, phone, audio, many, many, many options here. Very, very nice uh, on Honda for this. Um, there's another one there for range and fuel. On the other side, we have controls for the cruise control to cancel it, start it, reset it, set it, your lane departure, your lane dis uh, your distance from the vehicle in front of you on the right side. On the screen in front of you also, you have f um, your RPM gauge, and on the right side, you have the speedometer gauge. An interesting thing I noticed about this is the needle for the speedometer looks like an analog needle. And on the RPM side, it's a digital needle. Kind of wonder why Honda did that. On the bottom here, you have the fuel uh, gauge here for how much fuel you have. Um, your speedometer in digital and in analog right here. There's the gate, little meter there to show you whether your seatbelt is on or off. And there's also a clock down there. Very nice. You have the visor with the mirror that lights up when you turn it on. The visor does pop out, of course, and it does stretch out. One of my favorite features of any vehicle. I like that. It has grab handles right here on all four corners. And another one of my favorite features is the adjustment for seat belts for shorter or taller people. You pull this out and you go up and down so you can adjust that based on how tall you are so the seat belt isn't cutting into your neck. And I do believe that for carriage driving lounge today, that covers those driver features in the car other than driving modes. We're gonna talk about the driving modes. Right here is a button that says driving mode, drive modes. You flip that button forward or backward to get to what you wanna to get to. We're gonna cover this on the screen. So I'm gonna hit that and the drive mode show up. We're in sport. There's normal, there's econ, there's a leaf on there for tree huggers, and snow, trail, sand, and then there's a mode for towing. That's how you work your drive mode button. There's the button here for your hazard lights. And your start stop button glows in red, which is very nice. And nice orange trim to offset the black in this vehicle. There's your rear view mirror, frameless, 
Well, actually, it's not frameless. There's a frame on there. It looks frameless, but there's a very, very thin frame on there. And you also have controls for your garage door openers on there um, for people who know how to set that. And very nice. I like this interior of this vehicle. Um, it's pretty impressive. And I think that ends up at Carrie's Driving Lounge for today. Uh, we'll see you next time. All right, we're going to get out on the road for a quick test drive here with the pilot. The number one question I know people are likely to have because some of you have asked it in the past has to do with ride quality. I can't tell a major difference, maybe a little bit of a degree of a difference in ride quality, but it's still very acceptable, I think. The thing I like here is that with all-wheel drive, it puts you in a situation not only with just being all-wheel drive in general, but also with all of your different driving modes to be able to handle pretty much anything you can imagine as far as just daily driving situations go. So you should be in really good shape uh, whether you're dealing with snow and ice or maybe uh, flood, flooded areas, something like that. It just depends on what you're dealing with or just driving around in a city that doesn't care about maintaining its roads, kind of like what we have here. We unfortunately can't give you the best option to listen. I'm going to let you listen for a minute here because this area is rough. Now you do hear a lot of rattling going on back there in the rear probably. Uh, that's just because of some things that are loose back there. But as far as the interior noise goes, you definitely get some road noise. It's not the worst I've ever heard. It's definitely not as quiet as some other vehicles I've been in, just so you know. But the thing is, that's why you need to get out and drive these vehicles for yourself. Because you might say, that's absolutely no problem. I think that's acceptable. I can live with it. It doesn't even seem that bad. But my microphone is likely not picking that up the same way as what we're actually hearing in person. Just something to keep in mind. That's why I feel like the test drives on these videos are probably not as useful as just giving you information and showing you things about the vehicle. By the way, we'll bring up something. I actually had somebody one day who said they wanted to see something on the screen besides just a screen. So I guess during the test drive, their focus was right here. Isn't it interesting, the comments you receive on these videos? As far as the overall driving experience goes, however, it is nice. The steering wheel is comfortable. It seems to have the right thickness. It feels comfortable in my hands. I, the steering is responsive. It does feel fairly light, but that's not a bad thing for what this vehicle is made for. And then you also have the technology here. It's very easy to deal with, very easy to use, very easy to reach from the driver's position. I like that. And you have some really good safety features here. You know, I didn't talk about Honda sensing earlier in the video, but you do have that here, which is going to be adaptive cruise control, collision mitigation, braking, road departure mitigation, lane keeping assist, and traffic jam assist. So quite a bit going on here. Uh, quite a few nice features as far as this model goes. It's very well rounded and very well balanced out. All right, tell me what you think down in the comments about the 2025 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. Is this the most versatile trim level of the Pilot lineup for Honda? Tell me what your thoughts are. I do want to say a special thanks to our friends here at the dealership for loaning us this Pilot for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give us the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That's helpful to us. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please be sure to do so. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and we'll see you there.